Ted Kaufman, it's a pleasure to be in your home. Ted, you joined the CYCA in 1956. Tell me what the club was like then and what uh, racing, racing or ocean racing with the club was like in those days. The, the, the club was trying to, to foster ocean racing. And one of the biggest things that helped was the Kuchi race, which a lot of people don't like, didn't like, the Olympic people don't like it because it was a race up and down the coast and the Kuchi Life Saving Club uh, put out a buoy every Saturday for us or to land. And the conditions were different every time we went there. You know, it's on the wind, off the wind, and all that sort of thing. But it gave the best training that the club could give anybody at that time without a proper ocean race. And it was always, they, did, they got a good, in those days they thought if you got 25 boats to start, that was very good. We didn't always get 25 boats. And that was in the mix with uh, ocean racing which was patronised by all sorts of clubs, not only the CYC, all the Sydney clubs or even clubs from New Zealand. Were you all racing in the same fleet? That's right, yes. Yeah. And of course the New Zealand people came along and they always had the fastest boats. Why was that? Because that's what they said. <laughs> but they never won. <laughs> but they're lovely blokes. And then of course in the off season, we had the races coming up here to Pitwater, uh, your place where you got your house there. That was a very popular place. Coasters Retreat. Coasters Retreat. But that all changed, you know, that's all different now. There's no, there are not very many people in those days around. The Lion Island race was a very popular race and a very difficult race at times because at the time of the year that was held was there was no wind. Hmm. Tell me what you remember of the club, the clubhouse from those days. What was the spirit in the well, club? The club? The club was just a clubhouse. I mean, <laughs> uh, there was Casey K. Dalton who built a eight metre boat down here. It says, it says uh, oh, what's the word's name? It's a builder down here. And uh, he took the bottom part of the CYC over. He was there every afternoon with his friends. And the wharf only extended, I suppose, three, three, three uh, berths into the water from the CYC. The three boat lengths, huh? Well, three berths, yeah. you know, there's six, six boats there. And, uh, well, that was the beginning, and the, ha the, the, the clubhouse itself was just a shame, but, but that doesn't matter, it was just a good clubhouse. There was a lot of voluntary work done on the clubhouse itself, and a lot of materials were donated. But the worst part was when they pulled up the pulled off the veranda up there, they found the biggest white end nest you've ever <laughs> And it was dangerous, really dangerous. I thought just in front where all the, 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 the uh, beer was dispensed, that was the worst area that could have collapsed any time. Now when you joined the club, you started sailing on, uh, on trade winds. Well no, I, how it all started, I, it, I started in the window races. The, the window races, were talked about and they started and I had a star boat here and uh, I took that down to, to the cruising yacht club and we had a first window race that went to Manly and we never got there because no wind and I, I was I came second and Trady came first oh there was any result at all but that's how it was. That, that, those were the Sunday races, and uh, other than that... What year was that? First of the Winter Series? The first, I can't remember. The, the Warren Brothers, the uh, Warren Girls could tell you, I can't tell you. And uh, then, of course, 
this club over here, the Prince Alfred, gave a lot of starts. They had the uh, uh, what was that particular race down the coast? Come on, Montague Island. Montague Island. I won three of them or four of them, and then it got too bad for them. It was very always bad weather. And these guys, being such wonderful sailors, they decided that they didn't want that race any longer. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, I don't know when the last, last, last time that the Montego Island race was uh, raced. But it, it was a difficult race and it was a hard race and sometimes it was a very easy race, like all these races up and down the coast. But you started sailing the Starboat in the Winter Series and then you started sailing on, uh, on trade winds. And then after the Tidy. And Murph David became a very good friend of mine. He was an engineer, or I thought he was. He built the Tidy out of nothing. And there, were a lot of, there wasn't a lot of money around, you know and a lot of people built their boats the best they could. And the worst people were the taxation people, of course. If you built, <laughs> built a good boat, you, like Sid Fisher, he was immediately uh, investigated. Huh. And they never ever got him one way or the other. But uh, it doesn't matter. The, 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 the sport in itself, you would have thought that the government would help you or somebody would help you. I got sales from America and uh, to get them through customs I had the good sales wrapped up into all second hand sales and I got them through customs. But that's it whatever you did at that time, it wasn't uh, legal. Now Tradewind was a was a steel steel a steel hull uh, Murph Davy uh, built her. Uh, he was, I think, with Stuart and Lloyd's or somebody like that. I think Stuart and Lloyd's supplied a lot of the material, bits and pieces. And he was a tire, and he was a clever bloke, but he never got. And he ran the club there with with Miss Hamer for years. And uh, but he didn't get the full credit. Were you on board when she won the Hobart? Was that? Were you on board when uh, Merv won the uh, when the? No, Hobart? I wasn't. I wasn't on board. Uh, David Jones. Says, the boat itself was a. Well, I'll give you an idea. He had a four ten ten engine. On a companion way, and a carburetor was sticking out, and the Nest Cafe tin. The lid of the Nest Cafe tin was just about the size that fitted in the top of the carburetor, so the water didn't get down the carburetor. Everything he had was water disposals, radios, all hooked together, and if somebody touched them, he went to a sick. I remember a story about the winch he had on board as well. Well, he had a winch, he had a, a Hills Hoist winch, you know, but it worked. How did that work? It, it, it all worked. You see, the reason I, I sailed with him was because, uh, from an engineering point of view, and I wanted to build a boat like that, I wanted to see how all this gear stood up, and it, it, it stood up reasonably well, you know, for what it was. But, well, the, the final thing of it was we got caught in a Montague Island race, coming back and uh, on the lee shores, and there's never been a, all that all these years. There's never been an easterly guy like that ever since. And we blew out everything. And I learned a lot in that race. We were absolutely on the shore. And we had to get out there. They had no sails. But the boat sailed with a mast only. <laughs> it worked its way out. And I think we got into, into Sydney Heads and he had a last small Genoa he had. I needed the, the foot, of, I, I knotted the foot together because that was all in bits and we didn't get to the sea see. That blew itself out as well at the Sound Peaks. And then we finished up at the, at the Manly Shore inside there 
and all the blokes wanted to get to work, were home, they had to swim ashore and get, get that way, get home, get, get to work. I stayed with Merv, and in the hope that somebody would come from the yacht club to pull us to the club, but they didn't. They just, there was, the, the, the ferry wasn't run, to my memory, didn't run for about a week and a half. <laughs> Now that steel boat um, led to you designing. Uh... Well, the, 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 steel, the steel boat was just a just a boat. You know what I mean? There was no great of design. That's what we put, put the frames together, and we thought, well, that looks pretty good, and that was it. This is Mercedes too. Yeah. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, in the workshop, we did a lot of Lloyd's work, you know, ship work and whatever. And when the inspector came, he always looked at the yacht. He didn't want to see any other stuff, though that was a good thing. But uh, it won us more trophies than any other had. Uh, Mercedes too? Yeah. The little things, you know what I mean? And the shipwright's brother in law went around the world and I gave him a spare mass of the Mercedes too. Uh, so, and I don't know where she finished up in the bit. It was beautifully fitted out as far as the timber work is concerned, but I don't know where it fitted up. It went to, to the, uh, to the, I think it was as far as the Caribbean and it did get. And I came back to Sydney once or twice, I saw it, but it looked terrible. No, 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 no. Uh, who were you, when you were winning the trophies on Mercedes 2, who were your main competitors, Sydney competitors? There were just time. <laughs> there was no competitors, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just that he finished or he didn't finish. And, and uh, yeah, the city, I learned a lot from Merce Davey, but there is a sort of thing, particularly in that, in that uh, where we got caught on the Lee Shore, uh, he, he taught navigation and all this sort of thing, and uh, we were, he, he was worried that we, you know, we were in a very dangerous position. So he, he didn't have a chart table, he's got the chart, put it on the cap and sail, and his parallel rulers with a broomstick. We rolled that over the chart and he decided we were like, at a certain spot, but I don't know where we were or not, but we got home. But uh, everything he had was like that. You know, there's no big signs behind anything, but he was a good bloke. Now take me back a step, Ted. The the, tell me about, talk to me if, about the design of Mercedes 3. Well, the design what? was just a follow on from the other boats and uh, I was guided at, at that time. Uh, there were all sorts of different boats, but they all looked the same, just about, you know. And uh, uh, who was the guy that the brothers, you know, come on. Sparkman Stevens. No, 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 no. locally. Uh, he, he took one boat over to, to England, the first boat. And I said, Christ, I bought a fishing boat. <laughs> and uh, he beat the one. Uh, Swano, Swanson. And that boat. The series three looked a bit like that. I looked a bit like something else, and you know. it was just, it just followed. And then there was a rumor here that Bob Miller. Well, let me tell you something that Bob Miller designed. Bob Miller and uh, Joe Adams. We taught him how to mathematics. He didn't know anything. He came down here every weekend uh, from Newcastle with his motorbike, and. Bits of that. Then he ran into the same brick wall three times. He came, pushed the motorbike up here, and the parts of that motor go. I mean, there's still bits in, down there somewhere you find. And poor Bob, he was, he was just somebody who deserved to get on. And a lot of people helped him. And he stayed here, and Molly, my wife, she became the second mother of his. He was. He was going to stay here for the weekend, and after nine months he was still here. And Peter Cole and all those people, they all helped him one way or the other. 
and uh, but he had something that other people never will have, never. So he used to, what was that? What was he? What, what was it he had? Well, in the end, he, he was somebody who wouldn't he wouldn't trust him to design a boat or a set of sails or anything like that. But I'll tell you what he did. He went over to New Zealand at the 18 foot of championship or something with a new set of sails and he hadn't surfed the, the leech. Everybody, <laughs> he didn't have tough, enough time to do that. So everybody thought that was a new, des you know, new design and he won with them. <laughs> of course, there was nothing left by the time we were finished for them, but it doesn't matter. And he could do things. But he needed guidance, and many found uh, Alan Bond. And he designed whatever, forget now the name of the bird. And, but it was so bad, I had to cut the lid off the keel and this and that. But he, the Bond, he didn't mind, you know, he just spent the money and that was it. And that was finished up a good mud. What was the name of that one again? Apollo. Apollo, I think it was, yes. Now, Ted, you say that Mercedes 3 was just a follow-on from the boats that were around, yeah. but in 1967 at the Admiral's Cup, she was, I mean, the fastest yeah, ocean racing yacht in the world. It, but I'm talking in principle, it was also the crew was very good. And uh, it wasn't just the lightest boats, you know, we've left a lot of things out on the, on the, on the normal, like... Uh, Nicholson, young Nicholson came aboard boat and wanted to have a look around and he did and he said, well where are the, the, the cleats to, to the mooring cleats? I said, we haven't got any. We, we put the mooring cleats around the winches. Oh, he couldn't do that. He's not allowed to do that in, in England, you know what I mean? So we were streets ahead of all that sort of thing. Ted, um, who's the best sailor that you've raced against? Peter Brown was a, uh, was a, he was a good helmsman and a good sailor. What I mean by good sailing is leave the bloody gear up as long as you can, as long as you own a pace <laughs> for new stuff. But no, he was not, not uh, logically speaking, but just Boat sailing as such, and it, you know, he's on the on, on the helm and and, and with the sails. Was what you're saying. He 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 was very good at it, but not uh, not on on the mathematics of them. So yes, he was a good bloke. We always had good blokes. All the bloody no hopers of the, of the cruising yacht club were in my in my crew. <laughs> you chose them. Well, yeah, they all come along. I don't know why, but they did. I treated everybody nicely, and I thought, oh, well, that's all right. Uh, they did everything, you know. They turned up every, every so often, work days, and brought them out along or something to help. They were good. good I had a very, very good. Don't forget, some of them were with me for 20 years. And if you're not a good guy, well, only uh, as a skipper, uh, they wouldn't be there, would they? Now, how many paid hands did you have on the boat, Ted? Never had a paid hand. Never ever looked, looked like a paid hand. I was a paid hand, and uh, the unpaid hand. But uh, Gordon done. If something had to be done, he'll, he'll get it. He'll go to bloody America to get the bloody bit. <laughs> Somehow he got it. You know, it was, it was absolute. He was fantastic, but not a good sailor as such. You don't have to. To be a good sailor is, is I, to have a feel for the boat, have a feel for the weather, and know how many risks you can take. If you don't, uh, got to come to a point where you can't do any better, so that's it. And they know when to knock off. Some don't, some get hurt. Nobody ever got hurt on our boat. We've got to make sure that we've got the gear that it won't get hurt. So, uh, and of course, 
the, the club itself always had problems with the council. Not a bar sets of people, you know. And that, that, there were people there didn't like sailors, they didn't like boats, they didn't like anything. But the CYC made that last cut of spy, didn't they? Yeah, that's and, uh, and Rosh Kallis, the, the park there was a very wild park, I can tell you that. Full of bloody poofters and some blokes. One fellow who bought Mercedes 3 from uh, Melbourne, very nice bloke. He stayed there and he got attacked. He got to jump over the wall <laughs> into whatever there was, bloody uh, broken bottles and this and that, to, to, get, to get away from the blokes. That's how bad it was. Ted, as you look back now on a lifetime of sailing, what has given you the most satisfaction, do you think? Well, small boat racing. <laughs> Where, you know, you and another bloke and that was it. The, the other one was adventure, wasn't it? I mean, you go to England, you go to America, sort of thing. And if he did well, that was good. But he always had that hassle with people and this and that. And but with a small boat, I liked the star boat. The star boat was no. If he won in a star boat or won the Olympic Games in a star boat, he was a sailor. No doubt about it. 